um, in the industry uh, because in the industry if you see uh, the output is very important then how we get there and the the and it is very um, it's a very collaborative environment in the industry because you 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 are dealing with uh, a lot of people with a lot of skills and a lot of uh, expertise uh, to bring out the product in its best form right so uh, we look at education also in the same way we want to bring out the best of the students uh, so uh, we try to be part of their learning process uh, so that uh, he is understanding what he's doing and then we do corrections then and there uh, we do the demos or we do um, individual uh, mentoring to make sure he understands uh, how to get uh, to what he where he wants to get with the uh, designs whatever he has he's creating uh, so that is one main aspect and then we want to be inventive uh, by saying that we want to stretch the limits of uh, creativity we don't want to uh, settle down for uh, conventional solutions but we want to we expect students to reach out for more engaging more futuristic more visionary ideas and industry projects are uh, part of uh, the curriculum. And after third year, uh, we encourage students to go out for internship or work on industry attached projects. Uh, this is one of the projects we did with my, uh, Maruti. Uh, it was uh, mentored by uh, the head of uh, Maruti Design Studio, uh, Mr. Saurabh Singh. And then it, it happened all virtual, uh, but still uh, we did go through all the stages of design process and the student also understood uh, the industry process very well in the, in the process, right? So that is how we go about teaching. Uh, now with that, uh, I think you guys can preserve your questions and then we will do the Q&A in the end anyway. So uh, let me quickly jump into the topic of today. What is styling and design? Uh, first, let's go. Let's start with the discussion on what is design uh, because uh, the topic itself says styling in design, right? So if you take out automotive. Uh, so these two things are uh, definitely different. Uh, they are not same. Uh, design is a very focused uh, activity. Uh, like uh, three uh, three important quotes I would like to suggest here. One uh, from the very famous uh, Chris, uh, Steve Jobs, uh, who talks about design is more of uh, making things work, right? So he says uh, design is how it works, right? Which is so uh, to him. Uh, if you are, if you say I'm a designer, you uh, he he expects you to make things work and show uh, show the entire um, functionality of the product and also how it connects with the user as well. Uh, but if you talk about Chris Pangle, he says uh, he talks, he puts a lot of emphasis on uh, the designer himself uh, because design, uh, there is a famous quote that says design is what designers do. So he goes by that. So he puts a lot of emphasis on designer and his own individual process. Uh, but if you look at uh, Charles Eames, uh, who's a famous um, the Eames furniture designer, uh, he talks about uh, the audience, right? Uh, customer is very important. So you design as per the customer requirement. So there are three different ways people are defining this. Design. Uh, each one uh, is really uh, true and then uh, they are practical and uh, that's how the industry works as well. So, uh, so there is no concrete definition. Uh, we can define uh, through in a textbook manner, but uh, what is more important is uh, what is our own understanding of what is design. Right. Uh, in more or less, a design has to have a purpose. Right. Uh, it, it cannot be an art project. Uh, it needs to function it needs to connect with the customer and it needs to have that extra flair uh, that extra emotional connect right so these three things are very important uh, for any any design maybe you're talking about product design or uh, automotive design or even fashion design so whatever subject you may take uh, if you say design you need to connect uh, with people in three aspects so what is styling? Okay, styling is, um, I think in many other industries like fashion or uh, any other uh, creative industry, uh, styling uh, is the way uh, you beautify things. That's how it is always defined. Um, beautify doesn't uh, stop with uh, simple decoration, but it needs to have a strong thinking process uh, depending on uh, what type of product you deal with. Uh, so uh, somebody raised the hand. Uh, so you have a question here. Jitin right now. Okay, I will go ahead. Uh, let me see in the end, maybe. So, uh, 
so we are talking about styling right so styling and automotive design is also very important and it's a very um, very defined process in the whole uh, design process of any vehicle uh, the whole design process of vehicle will include uh, will start from uh, understanding the problem or understanding your uh, user uh, till delivering the product to the user right uh, till the end uh, maybe even after he purchases you need to be with him to um, uh, to 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 close the entire experience of the product uh, in the way in by uh, giving proper maintenance or aftermarket support or uh, whatever may be it is. So it's all going to affect uh, how your business will perform, right? So uh, that is the whole uh, purpose of design. But within design, uh, we are talking about uh, automotive styling alone, which is uh, the process by which you are creating the touch and feel of the vehicle, the, uh, by which we are establishing that emotional connect. I think this car uh, explains uh, that in, um, in a conceptual and also uh, in a exaggerated manner. So uh, in uh, in one point, uh, Cadillac was uh, fancying the tail fin uh, design motif in most of their cars, uh, which was inspired from the uh, World War II uh, aircrafts. Uh, Jitin Asha, right? Did you raise your hand? Uh, you have a question right now. Okay, maybe save your questions for the end and then we will have a Q&A uh, with all of you. Yeah, so I'll finish the presentation really quick and then we can have that. Uh, so uh, this, this product explains um, uh, why and uh, how important styling is in the vehicle design process, because this captured the uh, dreams of uh, American people very well. Uh, so it was an instant success, but though it wasn't liked by many other people, um, but it did uh, capture the uh, real essence of what car design should be, because it needs to connect with people and it needs to uh, create that emotional um, uh, connect with the product as well. So uh, why uh, styling is important? Uh, first thing is the user, right? So uh, users are not the same. Uh, I like something and you like something else, right? So same way, if we, even if you look at re different regions and cultures, our preferences are uh, different from food to clothes and uh, uh, products and colors and everything, right? So cars cannot be one, uh, one static and one same thing. Uh, of course, every car uh, does the job of taking you from point A to B, but it needs to have that um, connection with you so that your business grows, right? Uh, otherwise, uh, by this time, we will all have one box uh, that, that has been used by so many people uh, for moving from point A to B. Uh, but that's not the case today. Today, uh, we have uh, so many options right now uh, in various uh, shapes and colors and uh, forms and things, right? So that is mainly because the user, user is driving it. Uh, uh, user is not only, uh, uh, user is defined not only uh, by region, by uh, the money, what he has and the job he's doing and what he wants to do with the car or the vehicle and is defined by many other things. So uh, the main, uh, the very significant difference, what we can see is the region, uh, culture, and uh, uh, and the individual requirements. So these are very uh, easy to uh, uh, influence styling in automotive design. So the car from Japan may not look the same as the car from USA, right? So second thing uh, is the brand identity. Uh, brand identity is very, very important because these days, um, most of the cars can perform almost the same thing uh, with their uh, technical uh, abilities. So if you compare Hyundai's with uh, Volkswagen, more or less, they can offer the same engines and same comfort and everything. But uh, what, do you, what really makes the connect with user is the, is the way it looks, right? The way it uh, appeals the user, right? So, uh, so region and uh, culture plays a very major role. So here we can see three different uh, cars, uh, so which are from three different regions, and their brand statement is clearly different, right? If you look at German cars, they are very clean, uh, very mm, defined, and a straight line would obviously look like a straight line in case of a German cars. Uh, but in case of German, uh, Japanese, they are more artistic, um, more like origami, and more like very fluid shapes and very experimental forms. So this kind of connects with their culture, and uh, their brand is supposed to reflect that. So that is the main purpose. Even if you look at the American vehicle, they are uh, big, they are uh, strong, they are uh, boxy and um, and very refined and rigid, right? So like the way they are. So 
if you have a brand, your brand supposed to connect uh, with your people or the target uh, user group. And uh, that's why the brand is very important. So uh, styling plays a major role in defining the um, brand uh, identity of any vehicle. So well, be it uh, your grill or the lamps or uh, any detail in the front and rear or even in the body sides, right, are all defined by uh, branded or uh, by design uh, or styling elements uh, to, to create that unique brand identity. But another important reason why uh, styling is important is that the technology, because uh, right now we are at the very critical uh, stage wherein technology is quickly changing everything around us. So cars uh, are no, um, it's not left out, right? So nowadays, uh, uh, till uh, last year, I think um, there were only few electric cars on road and suddenly now we can see so many models in the market and also so many people are buying and using it as well. So uh, with, with change in technology, the internal components and things are going to change. That is offering, offering a lot of flexibility to designers and also customers are expecting new things because our older uh, mechanical phones are very different from the cell phones, what we are doing it today. So uh, the main reason was the technology that changed the components inside, right? So which made it easy to carry and go from point A to B. So our mobile phones are very compact, uh, whereas the mechanical phones are very big and bulky. The same thing will happen uh, in car design as well. So uh, it's going to change the way it looks. So how we can bring that change um, that is not uh, absurd, uh, but also uh, connects with user in a nice manner is the role of uh, styling to play in the car design process. So over the period of time, if you look at the evolution, starting from the uh, Mercedes Benz, um, motor wagon to tell our very new uh, electric mobility vehicles like the lucid air uh, we can clearly see uh, how the cars are evolving uh, from very basic and functional uh, product to very uh, emotional and uh, technologically sophisticated um, products and these are all well uh, expressed uh, through styling as well in the way um, the form looks and the way uh, graphic elements are played out and the brand identity is created so now we look at uh, what are the basic elements of uh, automotive styling? How are we bringing in that uh, influence, right, in, uh, in the design process? So every car, every car design uh, process starts with a philosophy. So even if you look at the industry, uh, every brand has its own uh, form language um, uh, and every brand has its own statement uh, in terms of um, visual uh, aesthetics. So some car wants to be aggressive, some car wants to be playful and uh, fun loving. And there are many reasons to it. So if you look at uh, Hyundai and Kia, so we have the Celtos, right? So, or even the Venue and uh, Sonnet. These two are uh, very similar underneath. I mean, all the uh, mechanical components are more or less the same uh, because they are sharing the component that's going to save a lot of cost for them. So any company uh, in the modern times are doing it, right? So to increase profitability and things like that. So if you look at it from outside, uh, Venue and Sonnet are very uh, distinctively different um, uh, propositions, right? Uh, venue is very classic, very elegant, and uh, it looks very executive style. Uh, in, uh, in the contrary, a sonnet is very, um, very strong, tough, and a very playful kind of a form, which is a bit more aggressive as well. So uh, that's the that's the brand uh, statement both the uh, brands who wants to offer in the market. So Hyundai, even if you look at the other models, so even if it is um, Elantra or ben Verna or even the Neos and all the smaller cars, uh, they are not uh, trying to be different in its own segment. They are all trying to uh, look very refined, uh, very crisp lines, crisp forms. And whereas if you look at Sonnet, even uh, the Celtos is a lot more, lot tougher and wide and you can really feel the vehicle to be more tough and playful and strong right so uh, so every company starts with a strong uh, brand statement uh, in terms of their uh, aesthetic uh, message uh, and which may be driven which is obviously driven by their own target customers and their technology capability and their value generation and all those things the second thing is the proportion and volume. The proportion and volumes are going to define uh, uh, the way uh, the cars are styled or the brand is executed, right? Um, this may not be um, very clear or very distinctive in uh, some of the mass market products like uh, Tata's or um, Hyundai for that matter. Uh, but if you look at Land Rovers and uh, 
even Hummers and um, and even some BMW vehicles, you know, at least in five years before, uh, they had a very typical proportion. Uh, they had very typical construction of the vehicle that that became uh, their own brand language. So even Lamborghini versus Ferrari, right? So Lamborghinis are very cab cab forward, uh, wherein the glass is too much to the front. Mm, though both are both may be mid engine cars, but still they differentiate uh, by the way things are laid out. Right, and where the driver position is, and then how much uh, you want to give for the hood, and then how much you want to give for the uh, rear, and all those things are define the proportion and volume of their cars. Uh, the third one is the uh, surface treatment and uh, the surface language, right? or this 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 is very important, wherein this makes the user to come closer to the car and touch and feel the car. Some vehicles are uh, very sharp and crisp. Uh, whereas some are very, uh, if you look at Renault versus, um, versus what else, uh, Hyundai or uh, Honda, right? Uh, Honda always used to be very crisp and uh, very sharp and uh, not very bulky or uh, organic. But Renault is always organic and big volumes and very soft and uh, friendly to look at and even go and go close to it and touch and feel the car. Feature graphics, this is uh, connecting to our uh, brand identity statement. Mm, I think feature graphics are the elements what you see in the front and rear of the car, which includes uh, the grills and uh, lamps and uh, fogs and then all the other smaller details. Uh, they are uh, graphical elements, but still they are very three-dimensional in the modern cars. So this is very important. This gives you that uh, emotional expression to the car, and which is very important. Sometimes, uh, at least in the uh, last, um, five, 10 years, we can clearly see some cars are looking really aggressive, angry, and whereas some cars are really smiling or grinning or uh, or some cars are too much smiling, right? Uh, the clear difference is from Hyundai and uh, uh, Seltos, so, so Hyundai and Kia. So Kias are aggressive instant, uh, instantly, even if you look at Sonet and uh, uh, look at the uh, Creta, right? So you can clearly see the difference. So, so that is important uh, element of uh, styling, uh, which brings you that, uh, distinctive uh, differentiation between products. And this is, uh, and, the, and last but not the least, the, how they are connecting uh, all these elements within the portfolio of their uh, brand. Uh, so if you look at um, Hyundai, again, uh, they're trying to keep the uh, front, uh, the graphic details similar across the products, across the brand. And uh, even if you go inside the car, I think there are some elements are very uh, consistent uh, across all the products. This this was a very important thing uh, for uh, upmarket um, premium products like BMWs or Mercedes, wherein uh, they wanted to offer same experience for whoever who buys uh, their product. I, no matter if you're buying three series or eight series, I think they want to give the same experience. So that's how it all started to uh, bring the same feel uh, for <clears throat> for all the customers so that they stick stick to the brand. Uh, they don't go from one brand to another brand. So that's how um, that's how uh, styling is uh, used uh, in the car design process uh, or in the car design industry by itself. Uh, now we will quickly look at uh, how it is practiced in the industry. Uh, this is this is a schematic or a, a sketchy uh, way of representing how the vehicle design process is. Uh, this was more or less the same uh, when we were working in uh, General Motors. So it's, it's more or less the very similar uh, format. Uh, it starts with a program formation from marketing or planning team, and then it goes down to engineering and design at the same time, uh, and then it goes to the production at one point of time. So styling plays, plays a very important role. Uh, uh, so in this area, uh, wherein after you finalize your what do you want to make, and it is about styling that uh, brings out that uh, three-dimensional form to the road. So in the initial form, it is more of uh, researching uh, what kind of uh, home language works. And then as you progress, it talks about uh, the real product design. And then uh, it's about uh, making it more realistic and making it uh, work for uh, engineering and manufacturing. So this roughly shows uh, the process. Uh, this is the theme uh, or the styling development phase. And then uh, and then you have the scale model to verify and validate within the design studio. So even if you look at uh, the capabilities and what skills you should require to do styling in automotive design is that you need to have a very strong sketching ability to create themes. Uh, this is not just about drawing cars, but it's also about creating ideas 
uh, that are aesthetic driven uh, most of the time and also problem solving as well. Uh, and then you need to present those ideas in a very uh, engaging manner, which is very important these days because storytelling is very important in the process. Uh, so whatever you are doing, don't need to look like the end product, but it needs to communicate the uh, emotional message of the idea. Right. And then there are ways to translate that into a very realistic product, project, um, product uh, that are uh, say clay models. And then these are scale models uh, to quickly see uh, how the vehicle would look. And then after some selections and reviews and um, top management decisions, I think you will go for a one is to one uh, clay development. So you should know good sketching skills and good 3D skills and then good uh, physical development skills. So this is very important to do styling in automotive industry or in, in any industry with respect to the product. So I'll show you how we are doing it in our, our campus. Uh, the, our students are doing a lot of uh, industry attached thesis projects wherein they start with uh, research. Uh, this will talk about understanding the user, understanding their problems and uh, understanding their inspiration and things. And then they go about sketching the initial ideas. This is the ideation phase where he's just sketching loosely and then they're creating uh, very tight uh, renders um, or a very realistic visualization, which is very important because you're communicating to a lot of other people uh, other than designers, like your 3D modelers or clay modelers or engineers and people. So you, you should be, you should have that ability to present your ideas in a very compelling manner. Uh, and uh, with the help of 3D modelers or uh, by, with the help of different tools, I think you're creating 3D models that are more realistic. I think at student level, it is very important to do um, do a lot with the minimum capability because you cannot do a industry type of project, but with the tools, whatever is available, uh, try to detail your design as much as possible. So these are uh, 3D models created for one of the projects. And there is one more project. This was another industry project. Uh, this is the company called Gugu from Coimbatore. Uh, they had this idea to create a new type of uh, electric scooter. So we were explore, explore, exploring uh, adventure scooters, uh, so ADVs. Uh, so that was the idea. And then uh, the students were, uh, were asked to sketch out ideas um, for the uh, exterior and uh, and it was, went through a lot of development understanding the ergonomics a uh, little bit and the rider triangle and all those things and uh, they developed uh, different other things like the cluster and the experience digital experience of the vehicle uh, and we went through the development of the prototype uh, this was done in foam but in many cases we use uh, clay as well uh, and then the final product was delivered so uh, that's more of uh, what the what is uh, styling uh, in the automotive design aspect. I didn't want to go very technical, uh, so I kept it um, uh, kept it lighter. Uh, so with that, I will finish my presentation part, and we can start with um, Q and A if uh, if that is okay, Dion. Uh, so yeah, uh, yes, Scott. Uh, you would like to start your Q&A right away? Yeah, yeah, no issues. I think you guys can start. With all right, all right. Um, one of the things asked is, can we have the link to your website? So if you can put that in the chat box, that would be great. Yeah, okay. All right. Sorry. Yeah. Um, right. So secondly, just one second. I will go through the website if uh, required. I think it's talking. Okay, uh, this is uh, this is our page. I think you guys can see it. So it is adypu.edu.in, uh, and uh, okay. So if you go here, I think you will see about the people in the campus, uh, founders, and. Uh, uh, university um, president and things like that. He's the DY Patil. He's the founder of a lot of these uh, DY Patil uh, group of uh, academic institutions like schools and uh, engineering colleges, medical colleges, and all those things. And uh, we have our uh, uh, president uh, who is Mr. Dr. Ajinkya DY Patil. He was he's his son, and then uh, we have all the details about him. 
and about the programs we have a lot of other programs as well in the in, within the university we have management uh, it um, hotel management engineering and all those things uh, but school of design was one of the uh, oldest mm, is still one of the oldest and um, we have uh, all these programs, this website is a bit old. Uh, some of the programs are not available right now. Like uh, we don't have Master of Design, Engineering, Product Design, and we don't have uh, Computer Interaction and Design because we are uh, changing this. Uh, we are taking a collaborative, uh, or, uh, we are uh, offering a collaborative uh, master's in uh, user experience with uh, uh, Imagine XP. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a, uh, it's a private uh, agency in Pune. Uh, they are doing a lot of these online or uh, uh, industry, uh, not industry, it's a university attached programs. Uh, they are not in the university by themselves, uh, but they are connecting different universities to different, uh, different uh, students from different areas. So we are going to offer a master of design and user experience with them. Uh, and we have these programs available right now. So uh, design driven entrepreneurship is not there. Uh, engineering product design is not available and uh, PD, PGTP design driven entrepreneurship is also not available. We have a uh, project uh, post-graduation diploma in digital modeling. This is a very famous course in the campus. This is a nine month program, uh, which covers only automotive uh, alias um, topics. Uh, so this is a very job job oriented uh, program wherein even engineering students come in and then learn the tool and then get placed in different OEMs. So they are the programs and the details are available. I will go here. Uh, and uh, you have all the things and then you have uh, what are the things covered and the program and even you can go through the curriculum also uh, i think that is available somewhere in the website so and there are uh, contacts as well uh, if you need any uh, further uh, if you have any further queries i think you can go ahead and contact anyone i think any of these numbers i think they are free uh, so you, i can drop in my contact as well in the chat box uh, maybe if you guys have any specific question you guys can um, ask me as well is that fine right there's another question here yeah. which says which entrance exam should we give to enter automotive uh, design at dy patel Okay, uh, we don't have any uh, uh, any uh, national level entrance exam right now, but we have uh, our own uh, entrance exam, uh, which is like uh, which is called PD DT. I think design entrance test, uh, which is uh, which we were conducting till uh, till the pandemic. Uh, started so uh, wherein people used to come to the campus and uh, uh, they give that return test and also followed by an interview so we are not doing that i think uh, ct right uh, so uh, we are not doing that right now but we are uh, calling students for interviews straight away which is uh, online again uh, zoom or uh, whatever is comfortable for everyone and uh, and we are asking them to submit a portfolio and uh, there will be questions asked on the portfolio and their interest and things so based on that we are going forward with the admissions as of now so once everything is, goes back to normal, maybe we will have the test and other process back in place. All right. Uh, could you explain a little bit about a portfolio? What mm -hmm. kind of questions, uh, what kind of port, you know, work do you all expect in a portfolio? Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, I can do that. Uh, so we are not expecting a very high level professional uh, work uh, in the portfolio, uh, but uh, we we expect three things. One, uh, interest and curiosity uh, to the field you are applying. If you want to do automotive, we want you to be passionate about automotive design uh, or at least have some idea about uh, why you are doing automotive design, because uh, it requires a lot of hard work uh, and dedication and commitment. So uh, you cannot feel like I don't want to do this in the middle of the course. So uh, it could happen as well, because if uh, you're not prepared well, then uh, it is very well possible. So that is one thing we test in the interviews. 
and then second uh, basic uh, design skills in the sense uh, your understanding of um, three dimensional volumes uh, your understanding of perspective and form to some extent uh, and third thing is the skills mm, sketching skills uh, freehand skills mostly uh, you don't need to draw cards all the time uh, but we expect you to do some amount of uh, freehand sketching free uh, thinking type of sketching then uh, uh, very tight um, industry or engineering type of uh, drawings so we don't want drawings i think you can show what rides or you can show um, uh, your own ideas about uh, different things like uh, cars for future or uh, anything that talks about your um, design thinking and also your freehand skills uh, so that is very important so a little bit of artistic skills to, to some extent but you don't need to uh, don't show um, very mechanical kind of uh, uh, drawing skills so, so you can avoid that and then you can go for more artistic more more free flowing uh, more uh, loose and uh, uh, more idea oriented uh, sketches and, and it could be in any field uh, you don't need to or stick to cars uh, at that at the time of interview so you can even show products you can even show uh, portraits and landscapes and things like that all right thank you for that yeah. uh, there's a question from aditya shriram who's asking do you consider the nid or uc test results for entering into adv adypu uh, it's not mandatory uh, but uh, it is good if you have a score in those exams uh, we can we can look at it so so it is not mandatory, but uh, if your portfolio is good and if your uh, statement uh, or uh, if you are motivated, then we are happy to talk to you in for an interview. All right, thank you for that. Uh, There's another question from Stephen Samuel. Could you explain a little bit about the animation and VFX course? Okay. Uh, I can explain with the picture right now in the screen. No? So uh, animation and VFX is a specialized um, domain within uh, car design uh, studio itself, say, uh, because if you look at bigger, larger OEMs, uh, for everything, they have a dedicated um, workforce or a studio by itself. Uh, there are companies who have uh, uh, dedicated visualization studios as well, with uh, very uh, high-end tools and uh, softwares and things, uh, because it's a very... Um, expensive uh, setup to have uh, because uh, cars are larger in scale right most of the time you want to look at things in one is to one uh, so uh, you need higher capable capacity uh, hardware and software and tools like that so uh, they are, it's a dedicated uh, area in the design studio uh, wherein people uh, who have strong knowledge in uh, animation uh, animation tools and things work there uh, to create uh, very realistic realize visualizations uh, for key decision making uh, events like uh, when you are presenting something uh, to the ceo of the company you are not going to go show sketches right you, you are going to show even if you are showing images you are going to show something that is more realistic because he will not understand all the conceptual things so uh, people try to avoid uh, very uh, a big uh, presentation. So uh, you will show uh, either a full size scale model, which is more or less uh, like the real product, or uh, with uh, along with that, you will show uh, three time um, realistic renderings and the visualization using uh, VFX tools. Uh, that is the way we use that. And there are people who create films also, or the promotional films, and, uh, and even uh, all the communication uh, items are. Uh, developed by uh, design studio visualization um, experts right it's not done by marketing people we have a team inside and then they will create all those things so uh, as far as the syllabus for that we are not going to do anything uh, focusing on those aspects uh, because in the automotive design program we are going to focus on the design process and how you can create a uh, good solution in the automotive domain that is our focus all the time uh, but we will cover all the tools that are necessary to do most of the things in the process like uh, 3d modeling and uh, 3d rendering will be covered uh, but uh, that will be from a holistic point of view not uh, not particularly towards uh, vfx or animation uh, oriented approach all right um uh, there's a uh, can i just ask uh, 
like sure. two okay. questions under that uh, animation and vfx course itself okay so what is the entrance exam for the animation and vfx uh we don't have a dedicated program for that uh as animation and uh, vfx uh, in the design domain itself uh, we don't have a dedicated program that is first thing and uh, and even for the other programs we don't have a test right now uh we are going with interviews mostly so your portfolio is more very important than the test okay so then what kind of technical facilities do you have for the vfx and animation like the computers and all that uh, the hardware do you have like uh, how is your facility yeah yeah we have a, a lab with uh, 20 plus dedicated uh, workstations uh, that can run uh, autodesk uh, softwares uh, mainly autodesk alias vred uh, and such tools 3ds max uh, and then we have another lab with 20 plus uh, equipments with uh, cintiq uh, screens uh cintiq screens that is mainly for photoshop and digital um, okay. sketching tools so these are the two labs we have uh, as far as uh, digital uh, working is concerned so maybe one of this could be used okay so then the last question what what is a placement service for animation and vfx uh okay again uh animation and vfx we are not looking at it as a domain right now uh, okay. maybe uh, but we have a placement cell uh, and we have a dedicated placement uh, officer and uh, he is coordinating uh, he is uh, linking all the industry people uh, to the cam- to the students and the faculties and everyone so uh, i am part of the team as well so what how we work we have a dedicated person who does that 24 by 7 and and me and other faculties we kind of support them with the right kind of uh, uh student requirements and uh, we we translate the student concerns to him in the right way and students can also have direct access so uh, that's how uh, we operate mostly okay sir thank you yeah. right thanks so much jitin uh, has a question jitin has raised his hand so you yeah. could unmute and ask uh yeah uh, very good morning yeah good morning yeah uh, sir uh, i've been i've just heard you about it now this course as you said the duration is for 7 months right if i'm 7 uh, months course right which course you are talking about yeah yeah your, your place which you are, uh, the faculties will join for the automobile designing that uh, what is the duration totally for completing this uh course? we have two programs uh, one is bdes in automotive design uh, which is for 4 years okay and we have mdes in automotive design which is for 2 years which is a normal post graduation program okay? okay and we have a post graduate diploma in digital modeling okay that is for 9 months and okay. that course is mainly uh, digital modeling only uh, we will not talk about creative process we will only talk about uh, 3d modeling 3d uh, development cast development and 3d tools and things so it is only for the 3d development okay and uh, what are uh, you know what is the uh, prospective the cost investment for a four year or a two year course what is it like so like for two years what is the payment and what is the flow i am asking okay. you yeah. this question it's related is because see i was i've been into event management for uh, 16 years and okay. since now uh, this course my daughter was i i used to tell her because she's too good at uh, designing and all that so mm-hmm. i thought that why don't you give her a chance because auto industry is uh, a mm-hmm. very developing uh, industry right now and yeah. i think another 10 years all, all the automobiles are going to be on electronic so yeah. that's going to be the medium and source uh on that basis now when you're saying of automobile uh, industry alone can't mm-hmm. it be that you know you have a course which says it can do the total you know study to the students can be given on designing itself maybe from that he can uh, select on auto industry or maybe into aviation because again when you say auto industry it is four uh, years which they take again mm-hmm. if we in between changes senses i want to go into aviation mm-hmm. so then what happens is you know another time has to go in so it should be a, you know all a consolidated one where you know the designing part of it which they can master it up in between and then take up a substream thinking in which designing uh, uh, you know portfolio they want to enter whether it is auto it is aviation or something Do you have some options like that as well? 
yeah yeah uh, okay uh, i will um, give you a bigger picture of uh, how this automotive uh, design course is run in across the world okay so uh, 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 this design course is called uh, in different names uh, in different regions say so it is also called as transportation design in some places it is called mobility design uh, in some places it is called car design as well so uh, basically whether you talk about aviation or um, cars or even yacht and other things no so the underlying philosophy is the same uh, so uh, typically even in uh, europe uh, if you take uh, schools like uh, umia or um, rca all these places uh, they offer uh, vehicle design but uh, there are students who do uh, yacht or uh, aviation related projects as they are thesis project so automatically their uh, stream uh, interest area will become uh, that that particular domain wherever they want to work on right so that's how you find your own uh, niche within the bigger gamut of uh, automotive or transportation design so that's how the course is form formed right so uh, because the ideas philosophies and then the process methods and tools are all the same uh, across all these industry uh, and even the engineering concerns are also to some extent the same Uh, maybe the criticality is different in different domains but uh, the way we approach products are the, more or less the same no. uh, so how you uh, focus and how you bring out what you want to do is from the third year onwards right uh, as i already discussed we have a lot of this industry attached programs and also uh, internships and other things so wherein you choose your industry you choose your area of uh, expertise see a lot of students these days are focusing on two wheelers uh when we talk about car design we we are not just talking about cars but also two wheelers and people are going to two wheeler industry for internship yeah and it they, is automobile so it is overall yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's every aspect of it yes. yeah true so same way you can choose aviation also as your uh, uh, field of interest uh, after third year because in the first two years you are just understanding what the industry is about what the skills required and all those things yeah. then you can choose your own area of uh, interest okay. so thank you but uh, another two things i do i want to give others a chance but i just had lot of things in mind now see what my perspective of thinking was as a not only as a parent mm-hmm. see we have to think of all the children first when we were there there were streams were very limited like we had uh, you know either it's engineering it's medical it's mba so that was it like an example if i give when we are too young when we used to go to a doctor when you say a doctor he was specialized in everything so mm-hmm. he was a doctor but today's uh, scenario is that they are specialized for kidneys your bones your bone marrow your eyes lungs liver whatever the streams have been divided now what has happened in this current scenario is the students who want to learn the subjects they themselves we have confused them rather than they getting confused also is because if one platform you know what i have seen in my experience all these years somebody who's done his engineering is working for an automobile industry uh, which is not connected to him in marketing at all so that's the this is the simple example which i'm trying to give is people when they join your um, academy is there a counseling happening which guides them which understand them they be, they are specialized people who will say yeah he is good at in the designing for aviation so they tell them no i think you should pursue this because this is uh, totally you know uh, uh, the right thing which you are doing can be positive for you in the near future for your uh, you know stabilizing yourself in life or if it's in automobile in two wheelers or four wheelers or creating something different because that's going to be the next gen yeah. where they will be all all into electronics so the competition is also high and the scenario today is that see parents are investing all the uh, you know academy fees to the institution the reason being is today the i am not i mean i'm a businessman so it's okay but people who are into it who are in jobs the salaries are cut down and plus the expenses are more and this fees is also they pay so they should be benefited in such a way living that the children joining any course uh, for inst- instance your institution also that there is a one to one counseling indirect counseling and support which goes to the students studying every background of what positiveness he is got in that specialized creativity and what he can pursue further to specialize in that though he can be a master of everything but like you you i said aviation or automobile two wheeler or four wheeler overall everything but then only guidance is you specialize in one but be a master in all so that the chance comes to you on the floor to do something can be pursued further another thing related to this as you said after they join your academy for two years course that is first is seven or nine months which i recollected 
then you said two years which is basic and four years is the total course after that the placements so far in your academy how many students uh, have enrolled and how many of them have got placements so far in an average of ratio i want in percentage that's all yeah. i would like to know yeah yeah, yeah. okay uh, as far as automotive design is concerned no? so we are running for more than 10 years now i think our our uh, placement percentage is like 670% have got placed and uh, 10% have got uh, started their own company uh, if you know tronex motors uh, and there are a couple of two wheeler company uh, company started by our own uh, Uh, alumni as well so and some 10% see because uh, um, our program is one of the premium programs in the country uh, so we have different type of uh, students so most of them do not come for uh, jobs and we have 60 to 70% placements in the oem uh, around the world and there are people working uh, out abroad as well uh, and uh, and we motivate uh, i tell you how the student development happens we do counseling our whole course is structured around mentoring then uh, lecturing uh, so that's how we look at uh, uh, education atlas for design in our institution <coughs> university uh, so we constantly talk to the students and then we try to find out their strengths and then we just want to focus them in their strengths only Uh, because what happens uh, if we uh, if we force something on a student uh, just based on industry that may not work that may not bring out the best of that student so some student from the beginning we can see them as an entrepreneur then a designer so we encourage them to do uh, things from a larger point of view than just focusing on the product by itself so such pro- such students excelled in creating ventures and then uh, some of them had money also so they can invest and then bring prototypes and 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 to some extent successful in the industry itself uh, but uh, f- f- to your uh, earlier question right so about how the education system and things should work in design field uh, i think we need to focus on core fields first i think there are too many specializations i understand uh, which is confusing everyone to some extent uh, but uh, what is what is very important uh, is we should understand what is core in every field say a guy uh, who finished mechanical engineering and working as a marketing professional in automotive industry is carrying a good wealth of knowledge in mechanical uh, domain uh, see these days what's happening you need to have uh, your field or your um, Uh, work related exposure for example it so you need to know the tools to work in it industry but you need to come from a domain uh, where in uh, domain knowledge um, where in you are uh, you have your core or uh, basic foundation say for example if i am working on a i uh, for a it product for an automobile automobile say, uh, sorry to interrupt sir sorry to interrupt if you are yeah. working example for an uh, ibm you are a software engineer yes like, and now you are working for an automobile uh, uh, company on a higher level so yeah. that is what is my example to use the reason being is see i am not talking on my child's uh, prospect i am talking on behalf of all the parents because today i have observed one thing is we as parents are concerned and worried of only one thing is we put our children we don't want to push them into something what is their interest what they can specialize into and how they can pursue further this point is related because i don't want to name that uh, company i think yesterday or day before yesterday in decaner and it is very clearly come that one of the automobile uh, company is shutting down it's uh, uh, you know uh, manufacturing faculty and 4000 employees will be having no job so you know that is also another factor other apart from that i could say is now since you are saying 70% have got jobs when they were there with you who were your uh, you know uh, students the rest 30% in which you are saying 10% had their own money they started their own industry i don't know how much percentage of them succeeded out of it might be one or two percent out of that 10% the rest remaining 20% is that in that 20% i can ask you is when your uh, one of your student is completed the whole thing which is their institution uh, you know helping them to bridge yeah. up with the banks the paperwork for doing the startup with the investments or the international investments coming to them through the project which they create they do what is the support kind of support as a role model you give your students once they have completed it their uh, work is extraordinary and then they can get revolution not only to the institution but to our nation saying make in india and this is the launch which uh, they could do for the world so on that way it is a recognition to the institution to the person himself 
but the uh, backup support which is to be given apart from job as a startup what does the institution play the role in that uh, regards also yeah, yeah, yeah. if yeah. if i can interrupt here yeah, um kartik and if you can briefly uh, it's a good question um if you can briefly un- address this question and we have more questions from other participants so i'd like to get into that yeah sure. uh, so if you can briefly uh, yeah yeah Wait. okay i'll just give you a link uh, i think if you go to the website there is some we have something called uh, uh, anthrop- counseling and so sorry okay oh, fine thank you yeah yeah uh, what i will do to your question i think uh, there is something called entrepreneurship innovation cell in the campus uh, through which we are uh, giving seed money to get started with uh, uh, prototyping your ideas that is there in place uh, and what we are encouraging students who are doing studio projects which if they are in good level we are asking them to present in the eic and then get their uh, project uh, take their for- project forward in terms of realization so that framework is existing uh, and uh, uh, the second question if somebody is not getting jobs i think we are asking them to continue with job oriented programs like the pdp program right that the digital modeling thing which gives a lot of jobs so we ask them to transfer or we ask them to continue in that course with a lot of discount in the fees almost uh, 50% is cut off so they just pay less money and then do the course and get job get placed so that is also in place so uh, we are tr- we are giving two years support after the graduation as far as uh, placements is concerned so we are we are keeping them in our database and then trying to find jobs for them for about two years so that is what we are doing so far yeah. we can go to the next question Fantastic. thank you thank you so much uh... uh kartikeyan a uh, couple of uh, questions related to each other question from tia patel uh, mm-hmm. patel will we be given the option to switch course say from pro- automotive or to product design or any other design course after the first year and um, yeah that's just in case we change our minds during the program yeah yeah true it's, it's possible and it's happening as well so a lot of people have moved from product to automotive and a lot of them have moved from automotive to product and graphic also it's possible yeah after first year you can decide i think after f- first year we have a counseling session and identify uh, who's interested in what and then because the fees are little different uh, product is uh, 3 lakhs per per year and then for automotive it is 5 lakhs a year uh so uh, you need to keep that in mind and then uh, accordingly choose that if that is a factor right otherwise if you are too much interested in automotive and you started with the product then it is up to you you can obviously shift no issues about that because your core yeah go on go on uh, yeah, your core courses will start from uh, uh, second year so first year is foundation courses so where you you are all together i think you are either we will not bifurcate in that time so everyone is together and you do the basic foundation courses and then we identify people with their interest or with their skills accordingly we place them in um, programs all right thank you for that a uh, couple of questions related to skills before joining so a question from anant kaushik says should we have any prerequisite skills in automotive design uh, the second question is from nandana s it says is it always necessary to have good artistic knowledge or to be really good at drawing to do designing okay um for both the questions right so uh, uh sketching skills is very important i think um artistic or not uh, it's not really important but uh, you should be comfortable in uh, drawing out your ideas uh, be it good or bad but uh but you we will develop your skills for sure uh but you should you should have that uh, you should accept the fact that sketching is a very important tool in design field uh because after joining you should not say oh, no i am not interested in sketching i will just talk about my ideas then that's not going to work uh so wherever design school you may go i think uh for design sketching is a very important tool uh, and it's the only language that uh, that is understood by any other designer Uh, so even in the industry uh, you are required to communicate with different type of people and uh, the only common all, uh, language is uh, your uh, sketching skills uh, be it artistic or simple uh, side uh, only side views or perspective whatever way you want to explain but if you draw something it is easily understood by many people uh, because it's a very cross functional domain so you need to talk to digital modeler uh, clay modeler and color and trim material person and everyone 
so everyone will understand only pictures so uh, sketching is very very important uh, but when you are uh, when you are applying to any school i don't think you people expect you to be at a very professional level but have a good understanding of cars if you are applying for automotive uh, which will help you to stand out from the crowd uh, and also have a artistic sense uh, because a lot of times we are not only solving problems uh, we are creating like uh, in the case of our today's presentation right styling is very very important where uh communicating emotions and expressions are very very important in uh, automotive design so uh if you have artistic ability uh, you are very um, already equipped with that ability so you can easily express yourself uh, through artistic uh, sketches right so uh, that way it's going to add a lot of value to your um, yourself so that way you will stand out as well so that doesn't mean you should always have artistic ability uh, if you have good understanding of things and then you can draw it out and talk to somebody uh, somebody in your team with your sketches then that is good enough for anybody to work in a design studio all right yeah uh, we have a few more minutes left so i'll take the last few questions before sadveer will will uh, love you to ask your question in a bit um i'll just take these last few questions here Yeah, um, yeah so to be good in do you have to be good in drawing this is related to the previous question do mm-hmm. you have to be good in drawing and sketching to become an automotive design automotive designer or is it the idea and size and proportion that matters what are you looking for yeah uh, we are looking for uh, ideas proportion and volumes in the sketch uh because uh see if you look at industry you know so even if you look at a smaller industry like a uh, smaller companies like tatas or mahindras they have 50 designers inside the studio and everyone is competing to get their sketch selected for for the development okay for any new program uh, so the competition inside the studio is very high uh, so uh, and how uh, your sketch your ideas are selected uh, is based on what you are presenting in front of them most of the time you will not get uh, hours and hours to explain your idea you will have only one wall uh, wherein you can post your uh, sketches with some supporting material uh, which means some uh, images and things uh, that is what uh, your design director will look at and choose so sketching is very 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 important you you will never get time to talk unless otherwise you are the head of the department then you can talk and explain and uh, do design otherwise if you are uh, at the very initial stage of your career uh, all you have is sketching skills uh, to express your idea but if you have a good sketching skill then it is easy for you to move on top very quickly because you are putting your emotions and expressions very easily in front of many people right without saying a word so that is a very big skill uh, and uh, and even if you look at uh, on you look at any website online right pinterest or instagram uh, people are focusing on sketching uh, and people are focusing on very um, engaging drawings and renderings right because uh, because that is making the communication easy so that's why everyone is working hard on it uh, so idea is very very important but communicating the idea is equally important as well and in fact yeah Go on, go on. And inside the industry, you are not going to get a lot of time to talk and explain things. Uh, you will just have most of the time. So you just have one portion of a wall to post your work. So, all right, all right thank you. Um, Anand Kaushik is asking, what score and exam must we clear to get admission? This question was addressed earlier. Um, you need to apply to. Uh, to the university through their website and we can, and then you'll be called for a portfolio and interview and an online exam all so, right yeah uh, we don't have exam right now uh, we are mainly focusing on portfolio and interview uh, for now because of the covid situation we are not conducting any exams uh, submit your portfolio and uh, we will have an interview scheduled and you how you present your portfolio is what matters so. all right thanks for that um, Right, Sadhvir, if you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Yes, sir. Hi, sir. Hi. I'm Sadhvir. So yeah. I just had a question. So you said you have worked in uh, Mahindra, Tata, and other places. So I just wanted to know, as what have you worked in those places, like interior designer or the exterior? Okay, uh, I worked mostly on uh, exterior. 
I think in Mahindra, I think I worked on uh, the Scorpio facelift uh, that was in 2011. Uh, and with General Motors, uh, I've worked on a couple of um, uh, concept that eSpark, e if you guys remember, I think it was a facelift kind of a project which was showed in Auto Show. Uh, that was one of our uh, very first pro design project in GM. And uh, in Tata, I think uh, I worked on the um, the HBX, which is the punch. I think if you guys uh, seen the advertisement, they are naming it as Tata Punch, which is the uh, sub four meter SUV, which is coming maybe by the end of this year. Uh, that is one of the projects. And in outside, uh, the, in China, I think uh, there are a couple of SUVs. So mostly uh, exterior, and I have a couple of uh, interior projects. So, so that is more of my experience. Okay, I have one more question. So can you tell me your journey? Like, how did you come to this field and stuff? Yeah, sure. So, uh, yeah, I studied product design, uh, master's in product design from uh, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. Uh, I did my engineering prior to that uh, from PSG uh, Coimbatore. Uh, so that is my uh, background, educational background. And then I started my uh, career with General Motors uh, Design Studio in uh, Bangalore. Uh, we started off as um, digital uh, digital modelers uh, because that time there was no studio uh, culture inside GM in India. Uh, so we worked in the digital environment for uh, two years and then uh, the company thought of having a studio. Then a um, uh, few people were selected and then we went to Korea to have that initial uh, incubation uh, and then uh, GM officially launched their studio in 2008, I think, eight or seven. Uh, then uh, we started working on design, st um, uh, design studio 100%. I mean, we were exterior designers uh, and it, our roles were also changed and things like that. Uh, and we focused on Indian market to a larger extent. And also we supported um, other uh, projects from other regions as well. Uh, so, because uh, Indian studio was considered as a satellite studio, so which will be a support studio for many other studios of GM, uh, like Seoul in uh, Korea and uh, Melbourne studio in uh, Holden. Uh, so we were also, we, we also traveled to these places, so we worked from there as well, so a couple of times, uh, so that's how it was. That's where I started, and then uh, uh, with the knowledge gathered, I think GM went into trouble uh, during that time, so 2011, 2012, they were not in good shape. So uh, I thought of working with Indian company to understand and uh, uh, or share some knowledge, whatever I gathered from GM, because GM was a very good company in terms of process and uh, methods. Uh, so, so that's how I went to Mahendra and Tata. So uh, they were also in very initial stage of uh, design uh, journey. And then uh, it did work OK. Uh, but still, Indian companies have their own uh, difficulties in terms of uh, getting the product on road. So it takes um, more time than any other company. So we, Mahindra takes seven years to bring a product to market, so which is quite a long time. And then I had this opportunity to work in uh, China because China automotive industry was booming and it was booming a couple of years back. Even now it is in a good shape. Uh, there were many electric startups and things. So it uh, gave a big opportunity for any automotive designer. Uh, so I had this opportunity to work for two years. Uh, so there, the, everything was very fast. Even the design process was very fast. I think we did uh, produ production cars in like three years span, which is very short. Um, so that was a very good experience. And then uh, because of other family and other issues, I think I had to come back. And uh, education was always there in my mind. So even uh, during my earlier um, uh, stint with many OEMs, I was parallelly doing educational work. I was supporting students in sketching and things like that. I did workshops also. So then I thought, okay, I will continue with education. Uh, I will start with education and then do projects and things to keep the uh, knowledge bridge and things like that. So that is my journey so far. So. Okay, so thank you. Right, right thanks. Uh, we have just, we've crossed our time, uh, but one quick question from Arvind, if possible. Arvind, if you can keep it brief and uh, um and, and ask your question that would be great uh, actually in the automobile industry like before coming to that conclusion like before uh, like uh, coming uh, coming to that conclusion that sample like that prototype is it made up of any plaster of paris or clay like that yeah, yeah it was uh, it was made in clay uh we'll just quickly show the image uh, where we have that image okay the process Okay, if you look at here, right? So this one, what you see is a clay model. It's not a real uh, metal or plastic. Even these ones are clay model, which was, uh, then they apply this film, which 
simulates the paint quality. So in, inside the studio, we don't work uh, with the production materials. We work with the uh, quick materials that can be changed and modified uh, and easily worked upon. So these are clay, industrial clay is what we use most of the time. If that is what you. Yeah. All right, thanks so much. Um, last, uh, last question. Um, so, Professor Kartikeyan, if you does a question, if you'd like to share your mobile phone number with a group, yeah, uh, sure. They sure. may want to contact you directly. So that's one. Uh, and the last question for the day, we will take from Nikhil Zakaria. So, if I may ask, what is the idea behind the Holden Malu? I'm not sure what uh, he's referring to. I'm not sure if you know the answer to this either. <laughs> yeah, Malu. I'm not sure about Malu. What is Malu? Uh, I'm not um, sure. Sir, may I say that, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Please. I say it was a um a coupe-based pickup truck that Holden designed. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, when did this happen? You you have the year. Uh, um. This was a concept, but okay. Uh, I think uh, in 2008 or something, they did this. Uh, see, Australia has this uh, big uh, pickup culture, uh, but their culture is very different from uh, Americans. In a way, uh, Australians like their pickups to look more like a car. Uh, it's like they have this very low, low profile vehicle. But they are pickups, which is a very unique body style. Uh, unless, unlike uh, your American pickups, which are high and huge and big, uh, these guys are like sports cars that look like a pickup. That's what uh, is the trend in Australia. So uh, I think in Holden, we did one project. I think I was not part of it, but I was exposed to that when I was there, uh, that they did a super ute project. A super ute meaning a super car, which is like a utility purpose for utility purpose so uh, i think if that is what you are referring i'm not sure but uh, we did do we did uh, uh, we did i did see a project of that that type and i think i they made it as a concept car in some show in australia uh, yes sir because right now it, it got a lot of criticism for that so i just mm -hmm. asked i wanted to know yeah, it was a concept for, concept project, uh, and then uh, it was very close to their culture. I think uh, maybe it is it looks absurd uh, to somebody in uh, India or Japan because we don't have the type of culture. But if you go to Australia and see things on road, they really have those uh, supercar type of pickups, uh, which is very weird to see. Uh, but it's a very unique package for sure. Right. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks so much. Uh, thanks so much, Professor Kartikian, for taking questions. Uh, uh, all, of all our parents and students and thank you students and parents for being so um, interactive I think that's very important um, and uh, what I'll do is just uh, let me just share your phone number yeah with, uh, if people want to get in touch yeah and uh, yes so that'll be great Thank you so much for a wonderful session with uh, with our, our students and parents, and uh, we'd be happy to um, have you again sometime sure. on this on the series, right? Yeah. Thanks sure. so much, parents and students, for being here. Uh, completely happy that you all took the time out to be here. All right. Goodbye. Yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, it was a wonderful session.